So what we're going to do now is just a video on what to do when, when soldering goes wrong. Now, I am not the best solderer out there, I'm not the most experienced solderer out there. What, what I am is impulsive and impatient, so I have made more than my fair share of soldering mistakes. So what we're going to do is have a look at some scrap boards um, to show you what some of the mistakes, some of the problems that we can encounter when it comes to soldering boards up and more importantly how to fix them when, uh, when they do happen. So one of the things that can go wrong when we're soldering components together is that we can get bridging. Now if we look at the far side of this JST connector we can see that two of the terminals have a bridge of solder between them. Now that's going to cause a short across the terminals and is not ideal. Now we've got a few ways of dealing with that. Now the easiest way and the way without having to use anything other than our soldering iron is literally just to take a very clean soldering iron and just try and pick up some of the solder. So just reflow the solder, let it melt. We're just trying to pick it up. So it might take a couple of attempts, keep the soldering iron nice and clean. Any of the solder that it is picking up, it's going to want to clean off. And although we've not got that prettiest joint anymore, or I've not got the prettiest joint at all, we don't have that bridge anymore. And you can see that the individual terminals are now individual terminals. Now if that hasn't been possible, there's a load of solder on it for some reason, or the solder's just not flowing, then what you can do is, is, is use something else. So the options are that we can use this, this is a solder pump. Effectively it is just a spring-loaded vacuum. So what we do is we just melt the solder and then we pop our vacuum over the top of it and we suck the solder out. Very simple, very easy to use, very very um, inexpensive pieces of kit um, available just for a couple of quid on Amazon. Now as if by magic some of the bridging has come back but this time on this terminal so we're going to assume that we've not been able to get it off with the soldering iron we don't have a soldering pump but one of the other products that we can have and again just for not much is this which is solder wick now this is a, a braided copper ribbon with with flux impregnated into it and what we do with this is we gently place it over the area that we want to wick some of the solder away from and then we just apply heat. Now we're not applying any pressure, we're just waiting for the solder to melt. And then you should see it start to, there we go, you'll see the solder wick into the copper braid. And then you can see that the excess solder has been removed. Now let's assume that you've got a bridge or you've got some excess solder on something and you want to remove it but you have no solder pump, you have no solder wick and you really really want to do it now, you don't want to wait until uh, until something can arrive in the, in the post. There is another trick that you can try and, and all you need to do is get some, some untinned copper wire um, and take some of the insulation off you can give it a little bit of a twist up and what we're trying to do here is just create our own solder wick now it doesn't want to be too tight because we want to let the solder flow into it and obviously we've got to get the heat through it as well that's going to make life slightly awkward because I'm for some reason I'm left handed yet have my soldering station towards my right but it's it's always worked, it's always lived there. Well, what we do with this, we just use the, the 
copper wire as we would the solder wick. So we just lay it across, we're not applying any pressure, just putting some heat down and then we should see solder melt and it will just be sucked up into the copper cable and there you have it, your bridge is gone. So let's say you've put a component in the wrong place and soldered it in, or a component has failed, we've blown something up, but for some reason we want to, to desolder the component and take it out of the board. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do that. We can use the same techniques that we saw with the bridging, where you can use the solder wick, you can use the desoldering pump to, to get as much solder off as possible, and that might get us to the point where, where we can take components out of a board. But well, assuming that we can't, we'll have a look at a couple of techniques that we can use to get these components out of a board. So we're going to have a look at, at these transistors we've got in the board and look at the different ways we can use to get them out again. Now, first way is just to try and melt the solder from all the legs and just gradually try and ease it out. So what we do is just try and apply some heat to each one, just melt the solder try not to burn our fingers. You can always use a pair of pliers to hold it, but at the moment it is fairly cool. And it's just a case of trying to move across each one and just move everything out at the same time. And it's starting to get a little bit warm, so I am going to reach for the pliers just to, not pull in on anything, but just to try and hold onto it for me. There we go, and that's now out. Now, that works okay with two or three legs on the end of a uh, component, but the more legs we have, obviously the more connections it's got, it's more difficult to, to go across each one and gradually sort of tease things out. So, if we've got something that's got a few more components on it, particularly if it's a blown component and something that we're not interested in saving, what we can do is just break it down into, into individual legs. So what you can do is literally just cut the component off, just using the snips, cut each terminal to take the component out, and from there effectively all we're doing is taking each leg out individually, so we can just melt the solder and then just pop each individual leg out. There we go. So as you can see it just makes life so much easier working with individual legs than trying to get a multi legged component out of a board. So another option we've got for removing components from a board is to use a solder rework station like this. Now, as well as a solder and iron, what this consists of is a hot air gun with a narrow nozzle that concentrates the, the hot air on a narrow section of the board. A wider section of the board than the solder and iron tip will, but hopefully still narrow enough that it's, it's not going to damage other components that are that are nearby. Now, not everyone is going to have one of these, but if you do end up taking a lot of components out of boards, or certainly if you're thinking about doing any SMD work, then it is something that's that's worth thinking about investing in. They're not silly amounts of money. I picked mine up for about fifty pounds on uh, on Amazon, um, and it's it's never put a foot wrong. Now, they're not the quietest of creatures, so I'll apologise in advance for the noise in this section. But what we'll do is. We'll get the airflow turned on and we'll just wait for it to come up to temperature. Again, these are temperature controlled, and what we'll do, we'll just hold on to that transistor there and try and keep my hand out of the way while I'm doing it. 
and we'll just start to apply some heat to the area of the board where that transistor is located now. As you can see that's come away nice and easy, but I see you are putting a lot of heat into the board and it just takes a few seconds for the air to uh, shut down after we've turned the rework gun off, so we just waited for that. Now the last way we're going to look at, at removing a board is more so if it's if it's something that is either a a factory soldered board or it's old solder or someone else has done it with some relatively sort of high melting point solder or, or some fairly unpleasant solder and and what we can do with that is we can actually add some fresh solder to it so a nice low melting point solder and what we can do is just add to what's already there and it will just sort of help things to flow that little bit easier and just remove, or not remove, reduce the melting point if you have got some fairly hard solder on there and then from there we can go back to any of our other methods to, to remove that component so if we just try and again melt this each one just there we go and again that one's come away so one of the things that can go wrong when when soldering pcbs is that the pads can come away now you can see here and here we can just see the substrate of the board there's no shiny sort of area of tinned copper connector there that's just come away um, this one here um, you can see is lifting it's still attached but at the moment it's still less than ideal now in all honesty if you're new to soldering uh, or you want a a nice sort of cosmetic result then getting a new board starting again and trying not to make the same mistake twice is probably your best bet now pads can be fixed but it is a proper faff you can make new pads from copper foil use a high temperature epoxy to, to glue them down to, to where they need to be and, and then glue some onto the trace as well there are also other way, ways around it um, if we sort of look at our board here and we'll take this resistor so let's say that this resistor is coming through this hole here and we're going to pop it in here so we've got a good pad on this side so what we can do is use this as, as a mechanical attachment as well as an electrical connection and that is going to give us a good hold on the resistor so we've not got to worry so much about the mechanical attachment on the side with no pad. Now let's trim this off. Now you can get an enameled copper wire for running traces on these perf boards where you want to run it to, to, to a different area and, and bridge things. Now let's say we just wanted to move this a couple of, of connections over. One of the options we have is just to leave the leg on and just sort of fold it down and and solder it where we need to solder it to. Um, if you haven't got any of the enamelled wire and it's not a resistor that you're that, that you're soldering down, then certainly sort of keeping a few of, sort of the resistor legs is is not a silly idea for use on things like this. I say just to, to run traces. So obviously there's no traces on on this perf board. But if you can see where this terminal needs to be and can move it into the right place, then I think you can rescue things that way. So the last thing we're going to talk about is dry joints. Now, a dry joint is a joint that that could well have solder on it, but doesn't have the best electrical connection. Now, this could be because the components moved as the solder's cooled and, and it's cracked, um, or it could be that there's, there's not enough solder, it could be 
due to sort of misuse of heat and or solder when soldering up the component. Now, a, a good solder joint should look a little bit like a volcano, I like to say. Um, I've been having a few issues with the the close-ups on the on the camera, so I've drawn some pictures. So we should have flow all the way to both edges of well, all edges of the pad, um, and we should have these nice concave fillets. So what we can see here, or what we may not be able to see if I can't pull focus, is that at the end of this, it's not quite got enough solder on it, um, and that is going to be a dry joint. Now, for something like that, it's simple enough. We're just going to add a little bit of extra solder to it. Now, they're not always that simple, and they can sometimes look quite good. Um, sometimes when you've got a cold joint what you'll see is that the solder doesn't look shiny, it looks dull um, and, and that's something that you want to try and fix as well. Now if there is plenty of solder on it um, what you can do is, is just reflow that solder. Now the smoke that comes off solder a lot of that is the flux burning away. Now the flux is, is a component of the solder and that's important for allowing the solder to flow where, where you want it to go. So if you try to reflow solder and you're not getting anywhere, it just won't stick, it wants to come away with a soldering iron, you start getting these sharp little peaks, it could well be because you've not got enough flux left in the solder. Now, if we still want to reflow these joints, then what we can do is add some flux after the fact. Now, you can get that in various forms. Um, the one I like to use is this syringe of, of liquid flux um, but you can get some more solid versions that come in sort of tins and you can just pick bits off of that or all you do with with the liquid version so let's just look to reflow one of these is so you just put a little bit of a blob where the solder is there we go and then literally just touch it with your solder and iron. It, it will be smoky. I say that will be just all that flux or burn back off again. And then we'll just get some refloat solder. And it's that simple. So, thanks very much for watching. Um, if there are any questions, I'm sure the guys will have a way of getting them to me. Or, let's see if I can't answer them, I'm sure one of the other guys will be able to do so. So enjoy the rest of your DBUK and I will hopefully see everyone again soon.